Ohio State you held them 15 under their average this year, points wise. And three of their four touchdowns came on third down. Seems like as good as it was, you were that close to making it. You know, like all time good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it really came down. We had one miscommunication and, and basically two tackles, two missed tackles in there that that, that gives some grief. But they're, and they're good enough to take advantage of those two things. So besides those three things, I mean, we. We played a pretty good ball game, you know, and uh, I, I think if we wouldn't have had the miscommunications and tackled a little better, I, I think we had a chance to hold them around 21 points would be my guess, somewhere in there that, that we could have held them to. But, uh, What's the thing about your defense that you, were, you almost held them to, I mean, you did hold them to 31 and you almost right, held them. Right, right. Well, wish close counted, but it doesn't. So, but it gives us a chance to win the fourth quarter and, and uh, we're, we're, we're getting better. I mean, I, I think they're very good on offense. I think they continue to get better. Ohio State does. The quarterback is a is a, a great player and, and uh, makes plays. So, um, at the same time, I mean, we, we made a few mistakes there we were a little disappointed about. So, Tracy, what's been the key, do you think, for this defense and just the, the, the amount of takeaways that you've had all season and just seemed came to game, you were able to come up with a key defensive play here and there? Yeah, it's. Um, I, I think the better athletes you have, uh, uh, the more turnovers you, you you cause. I mean, I believe that. So you just get more athletic, and if you have some strength and speed when you hit people, you knock the ball loose a little bit more. And so I think a athleticism leads to a lot more turnovers. That's my opinion. Have you noticed anything different from uh, Amir Abdullah? Obviously, he doesn't seem as healthy as he was, but you know, you can't take that into account yeah. in your game. Right. In one game, it's hard to tell. You know, so uh, we'll expect. I mean, he had a good game against us a year ago. He's he's a uh, he's about as fast a back as we'll play against. So uh, we'll have to do a lot better job of uh, of keeping leverage on him than we did a year ago because he has the speed to to get it over with if we don't. Do you ever try to learn? He has got beat as bad as they did in Wisconsin. Do you ever try to put an emphasis on? More stunts, more blitzes, try to create a big play in the first quarter when you think a team might be questioning themselves. Did that change your philosophy? Uh, not really. You know, Mike, whatever we feel like we can do to start the ball game, you know, we we will. And, and uh, uh, a lot of that has to do with, like uh talked a little bit last week, how good their skilled kids are has a little bit to do with, uh, with what we think we can get by with. Uh, they're a little bit more tricky offensively. Uh, and I say that because this is now we're going back to a team that has five or six different personnel groups that they put in the game at different times. Unlike Ohio State was pretty much one all the time and sometimes changed it to another one. So uh, um, it limits a little bit what you can do when you got to practice against five or six different personnel groups. And then you know, We've had it before. We worked against the two or three we thought we were going to see the most, and we didn't. We've seen the other ones that we didn't work against. So that's the big challenge for Nebraska is with all their different personnel groups of which one are they going to do? Tracy, do you feel like you could get more out of your defensive ends? I mean, just in general, this year. Mm, haven't had that feeling. No, you know, it's. I think they played pretty well up front, and and uh, so I tell kids all the time, the the production thing all depends on what plays they run and how they decide to block it. You know, I don't have any control over that, and so. Uh, um, so I I think our defensive line has played well and kept us in the ball game. Uh, with, um, Campbell said some things after the game about obviously looking ahead and, and you know seeing it, see Ohio State and the championship game in three weeks kind of thing. Uh, his confidence is, is high. <coughs> um, how do you kind of rein in the, the attitude of the players to not look too much at you know? Because they got their tail in beat. That's why. Be pretty simple once we get to practice today. Be real simple. So maybe one time that is acceptable around here, but it's not. So they better be ready to play or we'll lose again. It's tough. It's hard to win on the road. It's hard to win on the road. So like the confidence of the kids, but you got to play them one at a time. We've already been in trouble once trying to look ahead, and so hopefully they learn from that. I think the confidence level has been key, though, for this, for this defense all around. It, it, it don't matter what. I mean, offense, defense, I mean, you got to have confidence to play well. Yeah. yeah. I've never known anybody who thought they were – bad do good at anything you know so confidence you got to have confidence in order to play especially when you're playing against good teams so i think our kids are confident and expect to win but there's a difference in taking them one at a time and trying to look ahead and predict the future on what's going on 
with Nebraska, Tracy, uh, coming off that loss, you, you assume that they'll be a, an angry bunch and also it's senior day down there. How do you try to kind of match that emotion or exceed it? I think when you get good, you you bring your best all the time. So if you don't, you, you're you going to get beat. I mean, it's already happened once to us. So uh, it's more about worrying about how you're prepared and ready to go and, and not so much them. But I hope we get to the point where every time we take the field, we have the intensity in that and, and, and people have to match us. I mean, that's what we're trying to get to. And, and the more you win, hopefully the more used to that you get. Uh, with Buddy Calhoun, has he kind of taken advantage of teams maybe – uh, knowing how good Eric Murray is a little bit and this year, and the team's not maybe not knowing too much about body. Yeah, it, you know, it just again, you know, for the calls that were made and the deep balls that were thrown, he happened to have the deep responsibilities here the last couple times that they've tried to to, to throw the ball. So, uh, but uh, uh, he's he's taken advantage of the plays that people have thrown thrown his way. People around the Big Ten, all the uh, star running backs. I mean, just. Uh, Obviously, what Gordon did this week and Abdullah and Cobb, but how, uh, guy, Tevin Coleman, you guys saw him last year. Um, <coughs> how, how good is he, too, as part of this mix? As, uh, you know, I mean, Tevin did awfully good against us, and so well, I think that uh, he's probably right up there. I don't know how much film I have seen. I'm, in fact, I haven't seen any of them on offense this year, you know, as far as that goes. So uh, we were impressed with him a year ago with the with the spread field. You know, I think some some guys, though, you, the, you know, when you get your yardage out of two backs where there's more people in the box and coming downhill, I mean, that's, you know, that's the, the kid at Wisconsin now is doing and, and David Cobb, you know, I mean, the, the two hill down back ones, those y yards are usually a little tougher than the one back spread out yards. But uh, I think Tevin's right in there with all of them. How much better do you think uh, Armstrong is since last year? I mean, everybody, they get a little bit better off of, uh, I think he's, I, I think as far as a player goes and skills and all that, he's very similar. But uh, as far as checking the plays and getting them in the right plays, he, he's a lot better than what he was a year ago. Or letting him change the – and we really didn't – I don't know if he took a snap against us a year ago because Martinez come back and played against us. So this will be our first chance, really, to see him full speed. But as the years went on, he's gotten him in better and better plays. You can tell he has better – he's more comfortable in the offense. Yes. <clears throat> Jerry, the same thing, but would you rather get Nebraska coming off of the way they played at Madison or if that score had been the opposite? I don't know. You know, I just – I like to say I hope we'd play the same no matter what. However, do we'll we'll play our best, and you you don't know anymore, in kid. I mean, you just you hope you get your best, and you don't always, and because they compare scores, and and uh, so you know you you take them one at a time. And I I mean I think there's something to be said about you know playing teams when you play them as far as when they're hot or cold or whatever. You know if they've won a few in a row or lost a few in a row, and and so I, I think there's something to be said for that, but. Uh, at the same time, you can't lose your intensity, and you got to come out and, and uh, you know, that, that's a football program that has a lot of pride in it, and I'm sure that uh, that um, they'll be ready to, to play this weekend. Any more questions for Coach Boys? Hey, Matt, to see the running game establish itself the way you did against Iowa and Ohio State. Um, just how well do you think they're playing up front, and one guy specifically is Jonah in these two games? Well, I, you know, obviously, you, uh, I got to give a lot of, lot of props to uh, David Cobb. He's a guy that I was just talking with Chip outside. You know, he's the kind of kid that can make a, make an average group look pretty good. Uh, not saying that we're an average group. I think the kids are playing their tail ends off, but he's a pretty special player. So it's nice to be able to turn the ball around and, or turn around and hand the ball to him. But um, up front, it's a, it's a group that's really come together, kind of fought through some of the injuries early in the year. Uh, a great example is, is Jonah Persick. He was banged up early, has had his opportunity to play, has been healthy, been feeling good. And, you know, I, I made the comment that I felt like, uh, uh, especially against Iowa, but really the last two weeks, that, you know, he, he played like a big, time, big 10 offensive lineman. He, he played like a guy that, 
you see other teams trotting around with all the time. So that was very exciting, his development. And then just that meshing in, being able to get some reps out of, out of Connor Mays uh, to spell Joe Bjorklund, who was coming off some pretty severe off-season injuries. Probably wasn't as uh, strong as he wanted to be coming into the year, but he gives everything he's got. So trying to get him a little bit of uh, time off. And then from center to left tackle, those guys are our horses. We're going to ride them right to the end. Hey, you were already down, Drew, and then you lose. Then Donovan can't play. Did that hinder at all what you wanted to do uh, in the past game? Yeah, that, that, that was definitely part of it. And then um, just by the nature of how Ohio State plays, they weren't going to give you a chance to go over the top much. So, you know, you get to a point where you start looking at it and you say, okay, run game-wise, um, they, they, they weren't going to come up and support with their safeties the way a lot of teams do. So, therefore, it's a little harder to get back over the top on them. So, we felt like we tried to do as much as we could and take what they were giving us and, and run the football. And obviously, against an offense like that, I think the bigger picture is, you know, you want to run clock and, uh, and do those things. But then again, not having the, you know, having the wide receiver core, you know, get depleted. And let's face it, Donovan's a kid that can get behind defenses pretty quickly. And uh, there's a reason why he's able to get out there. And he's been doing that recently. He's gotten comfortable. So not having him, um, it didn't radically alter uh, what we were trying to do. Ohio State had something to do with that. But it definitely didn't help when we wanted to take those shots to not have him there. Are there things Mitch can learn in the second half? I'm sorry, I didn't. Mitch can learn. Oh, yeah. I, you know, redshirt sophomore can learn from every time he's able to step, set foot out there. But uh, there's no doubt. It, it, you know, we've got to do a good job, and I say it all the time. I, I feel bad, you know, and I know quarterbacks get a lot of accolades, but I feel bad for quarterbacks because this is truly here. This is an 11-man deal. I mean, it, it isn't just a quarterback missing or him, you know, him taking a sack because he's not finding the right read or something. There, there's 11 at, uh, uh, at blame when things don't go right. And it's, it's, it's a lot bigger than just Mitch. And we're, we're, we're making sure that every position, uh, that there's emphasis on that. Coach Kill asked us earlier today, he said, okay, you've had a time to digest Ohio State. Give me four things that we need to work on this week to go beat Nebraska. And one of those four things was, be able to throw the ball better, but it had so much less to do with Mitch than it did the other 10 guys that are out there. And, and that's, what, uh, that's what our guys need to understand. It's easy to scapegoat Mitch in that thing, but there's got to be a lot of responsibility uh, spread around on that. What was your biggest takeaway from seeing what Wisconsin was able to do against Nebraska last week? Obviously, but just as a whole, they were pretty much dominated. Yeah, I, I, you know what? There's things in sports you can't explain because Nebraska is a good defense. Wisconsin's had their number between the Big Ten championship game a couple years ago. I think they put 70 on them, and then, and then what they did to them on Saturday. And it, sometimes it's just those two pieces don't match up, and, and a team just really has another team's number. Um, you know, then you look at the bigger body of work in Nebraska, and, and they're pretty salty. I mean, they, they have some guys that are very, very good football players. And uh, I have a feeling we're going to see their A game playing there Coming off that game, they're going to be ready to go. So uh, uh, the last thing we can do right now is sit back and go, hey, we got this thing figured out. We'll just do exactly what, what Wisconsin did to them and have the same kind of success. They're going to be ready. So this is a really big week for us as far as preparation goes. Matt, would you say like developing wide receivers is one thing that so much harder than the general public might understand? Like From all accounts, that group you brought in in this recruiting <coughs> class, high accolades, good athletes, but people are wondering, okay, Donovan's out, where are these guys? But there's just a, it's a long process to get them ready. Yeah, you, you know, sometimes it's, uh, one of the things was, was when we had our full complement of receivers, um, we didn't have to force feed anybody. So they didn't get a lot of, lot of the reps early that maybe a guy, like we knew we needed Donovan last year and really drew. So right almost from day one, I know we had, Donovan playing a little bit of quarterback, but very early in fall camp leading into even our first game, those guys were getting a lot of those, those you know, ones and twos types reps at wide receiver. Well, we felt like we had had, had a better complement of guys in that, in that first six, seven, eight. So uh, the guys like Melvin Holland and, and uh, uh, Isaiah Gentry, those guys weren't getting as many reps early. 
and then we got into that routine and, and, and started, it's like in basketball, you started tightening down that rotation a little bit. And so when they weren't in it to begin with, it's kind of hard to break into that. And now when maybe we could use them and need them, they're, they're pretty far behind. It's just, it becomes a, a numbers game with reps and practice and, and those types of things. And unfortunately, Isaiah Gentry, who was probably the furthest along of the whole group, um, you know, he has the knee issue and he's out of commission. So that even set that kind of those dominoes, uh, you know, started falling even more on that and it kind of set you back even more. Now, the top end for those guys is fantastic. Get through, uh, get through uh, the season, go into the spring, feeling more, more comfortable with the offense. A couple guys leave out. Now they get those reps. Now you're looking at a different story going into 2015. Man, where is... Where is Donovan in your evaluation? Uh, uh, you know, he converted quarterback, played last year, sophomore. Now, where where is he? What, what's your evaluation? Tell you what, it it it. Uh, I don't want to uh, undervalue. Uh, you know, not having him on Saturday meant to us because he had been coming on. He had been, uh, uh, you know, had a couple good things happen early uh, in the season, and then uh, uh, you know. Kind of fell back into the into the the group a little bit, but then last three or four games started to distinguish himself again, especially being a deep ball threat, which is what we obviously really need. And uh, I think he was really coming into his own. And then to then to to, to get sick and not be able to go, I, I think that was uh, that was not a setback for him, but kind of a setback a little bit for us not having his talent out there. But you can almost see weekly him learning a little bit more and getting more comfortable and feeling better about things. And that's the amazing thing, having a little success will do for anybody. That, you know, he has a little more pep in his step. He's out there working a little harder in practice because he, he's seeing that proverbial light at the end of the tunnel, being able to go make big plays for us and be a big part of our offense. Yeah, real good game against Nebraska last year too. And he kind of do you like that when a guy gets a chance to go back against a team that sort of was, you know, maybe a breakout game? Oh, absolutely. I think he's, you know, he's feeling it. I know he's going to be ready to go today. He feels terrible that, you know, not just physically feels terrible because he was sick, but feels terrible he couldn't be out there and help contribute. So I think he'll have a really good week and excited to get him back in there without a doubt. And, and uh, the confidence level's got to be pretty high because he did have a lot of success against these guys last year. <laughs> it's all right. Good dramatic pause there. Mitch has had some, some success on the road in the Big Ten before. Can you kind of talk about how playing in those hostile environments that will benefit him going to Lincoln this Saturday? Well, I, I, you know what? He's uh, <laughs> I've said it before. He's a competitive kid. So I, I, I sometimes think he kind of likes the idea of, okay, our backs are against the wall. You know, here we go. Let's let's fight our way out, kind of thing. And and when you go to a place like Lincoln, Nebraska, and you're two weeks to go in the season, and you're kind of in this round robin tournament to see who's gonna you know gonna win the Big Ten West, I think he that you know, in his mind, that's right where he wants to be. So you know, we're we're not gonna do anything to uh, dissuade his thought process on that because when he's feeling good, uh, the rest of that group follows behind. So I think he's just got that fighter's mentality and you know, a little bit of the us against the world, and it's going to be loud, and they're going to be hostile, and that's fine, bring it on. So, uh, we, like I said, we won't do anything to, uh, to, to try and quell that for sure. Thanks, Jeff. All right.